Um, so I'm going to give also, I think I have five or six slides, um, a quick update on a database that we started probably in 2012 or 13. At that time, we just really didn't have any, any places where there were um, to, to look for global cholera data. We really wanted to estimate the global cholera burden. And so we started working uh, closely with, with WHO, with Epison MSF, UNICEF, and a bunch of organizations to try to suck up all the cholera data uh, that existed and develop some frameworks for storing them and analyzing them and turning them into into useful products. Um, and so a lot of the work we do is, is trying to describe cholera, understand trends, mapping, and to do this we need to be able to count cases. Um, and counting cases we need to, you know, we have data coming from many different places from, as you've seen today, from ministries of health. Essentially all cholera data originate from ministries of health. Uh, in different formats, like sit reps, line rests, line lists, DHIS, press releases. We have in-depth research studies, media, regional summaries, like Yom just presented, and then just random reports that you uh, that you'll find from WHO, UNICEF, MSF, others. And so we, and here's just an example of the types of data you you might expect. Uh, you might have a ProMed report that says seven thousand cases occurred today in this place in, in Kenya. Um, and you might have a detailed sit rep from Cameroon or a, an epi curve from a sit rep in, in, um, in Zimbabwe or something, uh, a line list from Sierra Leone. Um, so we developed a database that can essentially hold all these disparate and different types of data. Um, and a framework to actually put them all together, not have to choose which source is the best or which sources, um, you know, ha not to have necessarily a common spatial scale or temporal scale. And so within our database, we have metadata, so data that kind of describes where the data come from, how people can access, how it's accessed, um, case definitions that are used, some of the context in which it was collected. So. Um, things about whether it was a humanitarian emergency, whether um, information about the strains, information about the um, whether a vaccination was used or not, and then with and then each thing that's in our database is called an observation. So an observation means some location. Um, so either you can draw some polygon around it, or a shape around it, or an actual point, a GPS point. Um, timing. So it can be something like the case occurred on this day, or a case sought care on this day, or 10 cases came in between this day and this day. So it's quite a flexible timing format, um, number of cases and deaths, demographics, and then we have a quite a flexible, um, we, we allow user-defined fields. And so this is just a few screenshots of, of the actual online database. Um, and you can see, you know, you basically, this is actually John Snow data, just this is the first entry in the database. Um, and you, you, this, you basically have location, so this is in, it's, it's done by WHO region, Europe, Great Britain, England. Some 333 observations from 1854, from July 8th, 1854 um, to August 15th. And then you could click on that. So this is, this is one for Sierra Leone, and you would get then some metadata. You would see where, where all the observations are covered, some information about where the data came from. So this is a, um, from the Ministry of Health in Sierra Leone, the owner, contact information. This is public. They've agreed to make these data public. Um, the suspected case definitions, um, things about the context. If you, if you were to scroll down, you would see then the actual observations. You, you have something about the location, the start and end time. In this case, this is daily data, the number of suspected cases, and then some, this is some extra data about the, the geographic code. And then you could click here to download it as an Excel uh, CSV file, um, and yeah, that's it. So. Um, Basically, right now, this is all we have. We have some public 
So on our website, we have a, an older version of this, and all of the, the publicly available data is available on the website. Um, we have uh, data sharing agreements with some ministries of health who have decided not to make these data public. And so those, the metadata are there, so you can see what are in the database. Um, but then we have contact information for each piece of data that you can contact the ministry or we can help you. Um, and so, but we're creating a public facing version of this, this interface um, and working on kind of country summary pages to summarize what data are available for each country and give some sort of summary of, of epidemiologic trends. Um, a lot of it will look, some of it will look similar to what UNICEF has already done. Um, and we're, we're thinking, and it's, it would be interesting to discuss with, with folks here, whether kind of having special user access for countries or organizations that contribute data would be useful where, where a country would say, okay, we, we want to share these data with you. Can you create a special page for us to access so we can look at our data, but we don't want to share it with the public in general. Um, and we have an R package and an API, which allows people to interface with our database directly without having to go through the website. Um, and we, we've developed and are continuing to develop new statistical methods to deal with these really messy data. Um, because it's not just a single line list or a single weekly data set at a spatial scale. It's actually many different data sets that overlap. So that's it. I lied. Nine. Thank you.